Hi and welcome to Cakes and Conversations and today we're going to learn how to make a CWC cake and for that we'll start with the, with the topper first. This is just a very simple edible topper that we're doing. Okay, and for that my cake is going to be 4 inches tall and 6 inches in diameter. So for that I need around 5 inch circle. I don't have any circle cutter for 5 inches so I'm going to use my cake pan as a guide. And I'm rolling out red fondant because the design that I'm doing has a red color base at the bottom. So I'm just taking a little bit of red fondant from the pack. I'm going to give it a good knead. Whenever you're kneading your fondant, try not to stretch it like this and knead. You're, you're losing the elasticity of your fondant. You need to just knead it at the same place. rotating pressing rotating pressing rotating pressing something that you need your chapati dough you know same motions like that so fold press fold press something like that but you do not have to stretch it too much because you're anyway losing the elasticity of the fondant and that's not a very good sign your fondant gets more drier because you're incorporating air to it you're also incorporating a lot of bubbles to it when you're doing the pulling motion it's not correct way of kneading the fondant okay so now i'm just gonna roll it down i'm not going too thick i need it to be i need it to be a little thick but not so much So now I'm gonna take my base. I'm, I don't want to press it and get an impression of it. Just lightly on the top, and I'm going around it with my exacto knife. This is craft knife or exacto knife. I'm using a wafer paper sheet, edible wafer sheet. So I got this printed. I'm not using the butterflies of now, that's for another cake. I'm just using this logo. So carefully remove it. See that your surface doesn't have any water because wafer paper will dissolve in water. Just carefully cut the image that you need and keep the rest back in the same. Okay. I'm not using this butterflies for this cake, so I'm going to keep it back in the same file folder that I received from the supplier. Okay, now I'm just cutting the image. Try to be as neat, as neat as possible because the image goes in the center and then we don't have any border on this, but we have a border on the circle. So any flaws, any cuts or anything, it will show up. Try to be very neat while cutting your image. Wafer paper sheets are as good as sugar sheets. They really, uh, they're really nice and um, I feel it's more edible and tastier than, than sugar sheets. Of course, there is a difference in the color. The sugar sheets has more sharper colors rather than this one. But since it's just a logo and this is not somebody's picture or a face or something, wafer paper would work with it. If I, if I had to do a face, edible face or something, I would have, or a character, cartoon character, I would have gone for a sugar sheet because that's much more clean and crisp in terms of colors.
in terms of taste wafer paper tastes just like those wafer paper wafer biscuits that you get in the market and sugar sheet is something bitter okay so i got my image cut i wanted to i want to place it on this okay so how do i place the image is i cannot put water because this is eventually wafer paper and it will dissolve so i'm going to put a little bit honey over this you can use any kind of jam apricot jam raspberry jam anything that is thick and not watery and uh, or uh, even piping gel works very well so i'll just get some honey and i'm going to brush it over this very lightly and then we paste it on this okay so i've got some honey with me and very lightly i'm going to apply on that on the image i'm not disturbing my base yet i'm using a brush and i'm going to spread the honey over it a little bit on the center and maximum on the edges try not to press too much because your edible sheet may you know tear so just try not to you know rub the honey too like firmly like this don't do that very lightly you will do it because we don't want the sheet to tear okay so if you see i've hardly put anything okay this is like just on the edges it's not going to it's not going to affect my print but it will firmly stick on this and if you still feel that you know there are some edges that are curling up just try to you know take your that brush dip in a very little honey like if you know like this it's just too little okay and just go beneath pick your image lightly okay and then just put the little honey over there and press the image that's it so that's how you paste any kind of wafer paper image on a fondant i would not suggest you to place it directly on any kind of cake like whipped cream cake or buttercream cake ganache is fine fondant covered cakes are fine uh, but something that has a lot of moisture that is like something buttercream cakes or uh, whipped cream cakes i would suggest you to first place it on a fondant sheet and then you know cut it according to the size of the image that you need here i need it i need a red background so i'm not going to cut this but uh, if i didn't need the background i would have you know uh, cut this in the shape of this design and then placed it on a whipped cream cake or a buttercream cake because fondant acts as a barrier okay so that the moisture from the whipped cream or the buttercream doesn't sog it doesn't you know dissolves or soggy uh, makes your whip, wafer paper image soggy okay so that's how you paste it and this topper is almost gonna complete we just need some uh, border to it so i'm using a bead border i'm using a black bead border So I finished making the logo, the border, and uh, I made a little small little plaque of the age of the birthday girl. Okay, so so my toppers are ready, and now we'll begin to assemble the cake. I've made a red velvet cake for this birthday girl. She loves red velvet with cream cheese. So now we're just gonna assemble the cake. So we have normally covered the cake with frosting. I'm just smoothing, smoothing the sides. With my scraper. Wherever I will feel that I need any extra cream, I'm definitely going to apply. Always apply excess cream because you can always remove it off it can you can scrape it off
you need to continue to do so until you're happy with the finishing of the cake. For the drips, I will make white chocolate ganache. It will be colored in red and black. Since I need, it, uh, need a very thicker consistency, I'm going to do 3 is to 1 ratio. So I've already made red color ganache. Allow this to cool down before you put drips on the cake because of course if it's very hot and you use it immediately your buttercream would melt or even fondant or uh, ganache anything because any frosting uh, touching a lot of heat will definitely melt i have also um, i'll microwave the other one i'll just make the black one also so now my ganache has been cooled down or chilled it's become a little thick and nice okay I'll just show you the consistency it's still flowy but it's nice and cool down and thick okay so now I'm gonna fill it in the piping bags because it helps you to do an easy drip so my red red one has a little piece of chocolate that's not melted I'll try not to get that in the piping bag because I get the, otherwise it will block my way. Whatever is left over, you can always cling wrap it and uh, or maybe put it in these kind of Ziploc bags itself and uh, cling wrap it and keep it in the freezer. They go good for a month. Let me get my cake out from the fridge. It's been chilling in the fridge for like 30 minutes. We'll do the drips first and then we will finish the decorations. Why do we do drips on a chilled cake? Is because okay, once the cake is chilled, your ganache will set on a chilled cake rather than just dripping and flowing it till the bottom. Okay, so I'm cutting very slightly. And I need to do alternate drips, okay? So, I'm giving a big gap because I want to do red in the bed, in the center. Allow it to naturally flow down. If you want some drips to go more down, just, you know, go over them and guide them a little bit they will they will eventually fall down in my front portion i don't want the drips to flow down too much because i have a small little topper here in the front that's the only reason but otherwise if you see from the back it has different flows so this is how my red and black alternate drip is I don't know if you can see the color difference and the ganache is set immediately I'll try to get it closer okay now we put the toppers on the top and on the sides Whatever gap is left, like I'll just show it to you. So whatever gap has been left here, we'll just cover that with the ganache, just a little on the border and we are good to go. That's the final decoration. So this is done if you like the videos and if you watch want to watch some more videos like this of decorating cakes do write in the comment what you'd like to see next 
subscribe to my channel give it a thumbs up and follow the and click the bell icon so that you can get notifications thank you so much for watching